So it's 30 days since I bought and started using my walking pad, my at-home treadmill. And I wanted to do an update on how that month has gone. And I will do other updates afterwards as I go. But a month felt like a really good way to evaluate this. I did one at seven days and I did the unboxing and all that sort of stuff so you can go back and watch the other videos in this series but I thought 30 days originally I wanted to do 30 days because that's how long the um, I could have it and still return it apparently anyway apparently that's not the case but I'm keeping it anyway I realized within a very short space of time that I wanted to keep this so I'm going to talk about a variety of things um, connected to this because there are different aspects to it it's not a simply a case of oh, I bought this thing I'll get on it and I'll use it so the first thing I want to talk about is um, what is my goal for doing this so I work from home I run my own business I do have other little side hustles and things that involve me going out but it doesn't involve a huge amount of exercise or steps or anything like that I wanted to achieve my 10,000 steps a day and there are some days when I only do 300 steps some days where at a push when I'm out working I might do 2,000 at a push so this is not enough exercise and back in COVID when we went into lockdown I discovered these things called standing desks but lots of people who went from working in an office and were thrown into working from home had lots of ingenious ideas for how they could have at home standing desks whilst not having the space or the money to have an actual standing desk and one of the best ones I saw was to use an ironing board now I have two ironing boards um, one is an ironing board and the other one was one that belonged to somebody else that I was given because they didn't want it and before I started working from home I had a studio in town separately so I had an ironing board there if I needed it to iron fabrics and things like that now I don't really do any ironing I'm not going to lie to you I don't do ironing I don't enjoy it I only do it to iron out fabrics that I'm going to use for making dresses and things so I have a spare ironing board and I've set up my standing desk which you can see there and in fact you can see my treadmill is underneath it and so I've been doing a lot of my work in a standing position for the last six and a half years it's not exercise but it's better than sitting on a sofa it was better for my back it was better for my posture all those sorts of things with the walking pad because I am standing at my work desk when I'm doing admin and video editing and things a lot of the time it made sense that I sh should be able to multitask essentially so I thought well if if I have this thing in front of the desk that I'm working at and I'm walking it's multitasking I can t kill two birds with one stone and I wasn't sure how that was going to work because I had seen other people doing it. A lot of people were putting their walking pads under their standing desks and working at the same time, whether that was reading something, doing maybe a Zoom work meeting, some people were getting away with that, um, watching videos, that sort of thing. And it depends on how you are with walking and doing stuff at the same time. I'm not very good at using my phone when I'm on the walking pad um, but I also don't use my phone when I'm walking out and about I don't walk around town looking at my phone I don't know how people do that um, but what I have discovered is that my sense of balance generally is pretty good so what I have discovered is that I have no excuse for not doing 10,000 steps a day because I can 
I've discovered that not only can I just watch YouTube videos whilst walking on the walking pad, I can type. I have found that I can edit my own videos. So when I am spending hours of my week editing the recorded footage of my own videos, and not only just editing, but watching back and then watching the final edits before I publish them, some of my videos are up to an hour long. So I could effectively do an hour of walking whilst watching one of my edits. So I have found hitting 10,000 steps every day incredibly easy since I started doing this. I have only missed uh, a few days on the actual walking pad. One was when I wasn't well. Um, when I have hike days, I don't use it because I'm doing all the steps I need outside. And then the rest of the time, I am basically topping up to 10,000 steps. So there will be two to three days a week where I am going out a bit and doing some errands and things, but it's not enough. And then I will top up on the walking pad to hit the 10,000. And then there are days when I don't go out at all. Maybe I've got a lot of admin to do. Maybe I'm crafting in the studio and that in, that's I do that standing up as well, but it's not walking. So I will do the whole 10,000 steps. And as a general rule, I have been doing more than 10,000 steps as well. Now, the only thing I will say for me is that I'm quite impatient. So I went from nothing to all, literally the day that I bought the thing. So I've gone from doing maybe 1,500, 2,000 steps at a push to doing 10,000 every day. And perhaps not surprisingly, I have aggravated an old running injury uh, which was caused by me doing exactly the same thing, which was when in 2020, when everyone discovered exercise and going outside, I decided to start running. And I, I pushed myself too hard as I always do. I wanted results now, not tomorrow. And I ended up with shin splints. And that was quite painful and took well over a year um, after I stopped running to stop hurting basically. And since I've been doing my 10,000 steps, I've noticed it's starting to aggravate it a little bit. Um, it doesn't help that I'm, I'm I'm quite a heavy stepper. I always talk about myself as when I go out running, it's like I'm like a little baby elephant, I'm just stomping around. Um, so I'm having to learn how to walk more gently, so to speak. And I'm finding ways to do that. But as a general rule, I am doing more than my 10,000 steps per day. So the goal has been reached. I wanted to be able to do my five miles of walking every day. And that is what I am doing. So in terms of the working and the multitasking, I have so many hours a day where I am standing in front of that desk. I'm doing things on the computer. I could be walking at the same time. And that means that 10,000 steps can go really fast if I am, say, watching um, an a couple of edits of videos, I can kill that in no time, easy. Sometimes I have done my 10,000 steps before I've all got to dinner time. So there's the fitness aspect, there is the general moving around. It's been really good for my back and my hips and my legs apart from the aggravated injury. It's better than me standing still. It's been better for my ankles because my ankles and my feet haven't been great the last couple of years and I blame that on me standing up all day. So moving around is better, you can get a better posture, you can move intentionally with your knees and get your posture right and walking with your ankles as well because you can get movement into your ankles so you're getting some movement in the joints there and I think that is now starting to have some, um, some effect now. I'm trying also in between doing just the standing and the walking, I'm trying to sit a bit more um, because standing all day is also can be quite bad for you. Um, one of the other goals that I was hoping to get from doing this was distraction. So I am, um, it, it's a problem when, like me, you're a grazer, you're a snacker, and the kitchen's only next door to where you're working. So I would very often, if I was uh, in between work, or I was just watching a video, or I just stopped for five minutes, uh, I'll go and get something from the, from the kitchen, and I'll eat something. And it won't be much, it'll be like a mouthful of something, but that adds up over the course of a day, 
and over the course of weeks and over the course of months and my weight has continued to climb all year and it's not been great so earlier this year I finally managed to get a handle on my snacking um, I've been really cutting out the processed ultra processed foods I've cut right back on the sugar and I've noticed that I am less interested in snacking because I'm not eating all those chemical triggers which make you want to eat more which is how the retailers and supermarkets get you I've been wanting less and I've noticed that difference I am craving sugar less and not thinking about reaching for food every time I have nothing to do since I have had the walking pad it's also given me a new distraction because whereas before I would have gone to the kitchen to get something when I was in between work or just standing watching a video I can now hop on the treadmill and I can walk instead and walking and eating is not a thing I do so I'm walking more than I'm eating now so that has definitely had an effect I don't know if that's going to have an effect on my weight um, I have seen watched a lot of YouTube videos um, most of them will tell you that you don't lose weight doing 10,000 steps a day I think that also depends on you because a lot of the people that do the YouTube videos are fit healthy people who already have a busy lifestyle if you are someone like me who's gone from doing almost no steps a day to doing five miles every single day, that might have an effect short term. And especially if it has helped me reduce snacking and if I've also intentionally tried to cut back on certain bad foods. So I am going to weigh myself and I will include that information in this video. And we'll just see if it's had a difference. I don't think after one month you're likely to see a difference. I used to be a gym bunny and I used to plot every single day that I ran or I exercised. I was counting calories. I got very obsessed by it and I don't want to go back to being that person. I did that years ago when I was at the gym and when I started the running and I was also doing calorie counting with apps and I got completely obsessed by it. I would literally weigh myself in the morning, weigh myself after lunch, weigh myself in the evening. It was an obsession and I don't want to go back there again. So I am weighing myself for the end of this 30 day exercise, so to speak, and then I probably won't do it again for a while. I feel trimmer. Um, before I got this, and this was the snapping point really, and also with the eating, I looked sloppy, I looked sluggish, um, I just looked like a barrel. There was nothing trim about me, and that was really what was my snapping point, because I just looked absolutely horrific. And um, My weight has climbed and climbed and climbed, and then I weighed myself, and I am heavier than the heaviest weight I've ever been in my entire life. And it's just so soul destroying. And I knew that all I have to do is to get on top of the eating and the exercise. It's not the fault of working from home. It's the fault of my routine. It's, and I already knew by that point that making myself go outside and do five miles every day, minimum walking, was not going to happen. I've tried it so many times. I am not disciplined enough. I don't want to go out on cold days. There are days when I'm too busy or maybe I'm too tired and I just don't want to go out. And there are lots of days where I didn't go out. And the other problem is it's boring. Walking around the block for five miles, the same, seeing the same things every day is boring. With the treadmill, it doesn't feel boring I've always loved treadmills, they were always my go-to at the gym. It's still got its novelty aspect to it, but also I can just watch a video for 20 minutes and kill three, three or four thousand steps. And if that's what it takes, that's what I'll do. Now if you're a fitness bunny and going out is your thing, then this won't work for you. But if you just want to get the exercise in, it builds a mentality of moving around. And there are still days where I will make sure I'm dividing up all my errands throughout the day so that maybe I have to leave the house three times a day. And that's fine. I'm not using 
that as an excuse to never go out. I am still doing the going out things as before. This is just an addition to help you top up to my limits. And of course now, we are now in, well, feels like late autumn. It isn't late autumn at all. It's almost the middle of November. And it's incredibly dark. We're running out of sun. It's cold. And I just don't want to be bothered with it unless I have to. I have my windows. If it's not too cold, I will open the windows. I'm not adverse to being outside. It's just not working for me. And I would rather cut the corners and do the things, so to speak, rather than constantly beating myself up about the fact that, well, I didn't go and do my five miles of walking today because it was tipping down all day. So I've made a compromise. So we'll see how we get on with that. Um, something else that I wanted to talk about was um, the size of the walking pad. So some people have said it looks really small and that you won't be able to get a proper stride out of it. I do, but I am only five foot four. My stride isn't that long. And you can increase your stride as well if you up the speed of the treadmill and then stride out thus walking slower but with a longer stride you can really stretch your leg muscles out so i can work i can walk at my normal pace with my normal stride length or i can up the speed a little bit and i can lengthen my stride right out so i'm reaching out and because it's going faster and i'm reaching out i'm not running out of treadmill I don't know if that makes sense. Now, as I said, I'm only five foot four. If you are tall, this will probably be too short for you. I think there are longer ones, um, but you know, I would say that if you are like five foot nine and above, you might struggle with this if you have a long stride. It depends, you would have to experiment with it. For me, it's spot on, absolutely spot on. I can do my stride lengthening, I can walk at normal, um, if I'm doing something that's very involved and I need to focus, I will walk at a slower speed, but I'm still walking. If I'm doing something that doesn't require much concentration, like I'm just watching a YouTube video, I will up the speed and walk faster with longer strides. But I am trying not to aggravate this injury in my leg. Um, and if I overdo it, I can really feel it. So I'm trying to get the balance right and just build up my strength as I go. So in terms of stride, no problem for me walking at a relatively normal pace and I can also stride out if I want to. And of course I am still going out as well and when I go out um, you walk differently obviously because you are propelling yourself. Someone said you can't be walking properly because the treadmill's doing the work for you uh, but I'm still doing a lot more than I would otherwise. So it's got to be doing something hasn't it? And I have a little pedometer app on my phone so I can count the strides and it's counting the equivalent miles and the calorie burn that goes with it. I'm not a particularly fit person at all. Um, my weight is too high, so it's making me work. One of the other things, the other advantages in, in that respect is that now we are in autumn. Um, I lead quite a frugal lifestyle. Um, energy costs are always a problem in winter. This keeps me warm. If I'm feeling chilly and I just need to get my body temperature up a bit, 20 minutes on that at a reasonable speed warms me up. So that is going to give me potentially some free heating, so to speak. Because if I'm feeling a bit cold and um, I get days where I just feel cold for no particular reason, other days where I'm really warm, I can pop on that at a reasonable speed, get my body, get my, my temperature rate up, get my, get my heart moving and um, and I'm warm again and that will keep and I can do that as many times as I need to so that is has an advantage there it's going to help me with my very cold flat because I don't use the central heating or I don't use it until it gets really cold and at the moment it's not cold enough for the heating it's still holding at about 15 degrees indoors um, temperatures are starting to drop quite a lot outside night time's not a problem because I have so many duvets for my bed um, and I have my um, my blankets on and I sit on the sofa with my hot water bottle and that's perfectly fine 
During the day though, we are starting to get one or two day temperatures of eight, nine degrees. And I think that being able to bolster my, um, my temperature by walking is a great thing. And that's one of the things is why people get cold is because you're not moving around enough. You've got to get your metabolism up. You've got to get your body walking. That warm you up. It'll get your blood pumping faster around your body. That will warm you up. If you live in cold environments, the worst thing you can do is to sit still. You need to get up and move. And that's why our pensioners are at such a risk this winter when they can't afford to put their heating on is because they are largely not mobile enough to be able to warm themselves up like that. Um, what else do I need to talk about? I think that probably covers everything. Um, apart from doing my weight, I am also going to record my energy usage because one of my concerns was how much this thing was going to cost to run. And somebody said, well, doesn't it have an energy rating on it? Well, the energy ratings will only give you an approximation because it depends on how often you're using it, how long you're using it for, what speed you're using it at, as to how much it will use. So I've been monitoring my energy and I've been taking readings so that I know how much it's using at certain times and I've been working on offsetting the energy usage for that thing by switching my freezers off. Now, I know that some people said a, that's a really dangerous thing to do because your food will defrost. It doesn't. And some other people have said it's a waste of time doing it because you won't save any energy. So I am going to do my meter readings. I tested with two lengths of time when my freezers were off. I started off doing a 12 hour. So that was a, a 10 p.m. to 10 a.m. off and then I extended it to 7 p.m. off to 10 a.m. on because I don't need to open my freezers in that time. My freezers are always packed quite full or very full and I don't open them during those times so they are retaining the energy. And I did read that fridge freezers or freezers are designed to last up to 48 hours in case of a power cut. So if I've got it off for 15 hours, everything should stay frozen. Now I've been doing that experiment for a month and everything in my freezers is still frozen. It's not causing any problems. I have all sorts of things in there. I have vegetables, fruit, milk, meat, um, cheese, all sorts of things in my freezer and everything is absolutely fine. So I'm not worried about that, but the, the real game changer will be not saving energy because all I wanted to do was offset how much energy the walking pad was using with how much I could save on the fridge freezer because what I wanted to end up with was the same energy usage as I have without the walking pad and my freezers being on all the time. I have done a little bit of an experiment and it looked like having my freezers off for 12 hours uh, was reducing my energy usage. I have a very small energy usage and it did look like it had reduced it a little bit and I suspect probably enough um, to compensate for that. But I'm going to go and do those energy readings now and, um, and I will get back to you and then I can finish off this video and I should also do my weigh-in and we'll talk about that as well. So I will get back to you shortly. Okay, so it's time to finish this update. Uh, it's a little bit later, I've put an extra layer on. It's about 14 in the flat at the moment, so just fancy it's an extra layer. Uh, so, two things. I've taken some readings. So the first one is energy. This month, or the, the time that I have used, uh, and it's been a month, so it's a month of using the walking pad as well as cutting back on how, how often my freezers are on and my usage has come in at 55 kilowatts which is very average for me so depending so I've looked at this year's readings so far for each month they can vary between 52 and 64 units per month of usage so that's very much an average and if I take the whole of this year's electricity usage, 
it averages at 42 per month uh, sorry 52 per month but as I've said before my months don't always stay the same so every quarter I go away for two weeks so that means there's the equivalent of two months eight weeks when I'm not here so there's slightly less usage so cutting back on the freezers and using the walking pad on what is going to be a fairly average month for me means that my usage is coming out 55 per month which means that it has not increased my usage I have managed to offset the use of the walking pad by cutting back on the freezers so that's great now obviously my energy bill is still going to be higher because our bills went up um, in on the 1st of October so I'm just mitigating damage I'm just trying to limit the damage of the bills going up and of course most of my bill is standing charge so there's only so much I can do but using the walking pad is not making my energy more expensive I'm not going to bother doing an experiment putting the freezers back on full time and still using the walking pad because I know my average energy usage in the previous months of the year so I already know what things cost and I've done a seven day trial so I know you know how much roughly I'm saving by having them off for say 12 hours or 15 hours so that's brilliant that means that I can keep using the walking pad and it's not costing me any, any extra to run if anything it incentivizes me to go out more and walk for real more because the less obviously the less I use the walking pad even though it's only a small amount that is potentially going to reduce my bill so it hasn't impacted my energy bills um, the other thing I did I I wasn't I was in two minds whether or not to weigh myself because I thought 30 days there can't be that much change. I mean, it is quite a big difference in terms of um, how much extra walking I've done, but is it real walking? Some people say, well, you're not doing real walking. Um, it can't make that much of an impact. So I've crunched some numbers on this um, because I use a pedometer so I can calculate daily, weekly, monthly, and it's not an exact science. You put in your stats, so you put in your weight, your height, an approximate step distance so it can calculate miles that sort of thing so this is not an exact science but when I stepped on the scales this afternoon I was surprised because I have lost five and a half pounds I thought I looked like I had but I often look like I have and I haven't and sometimes I've put weight on now there's a lot of mitigating factors in this so not only have I increased my exercise hugely I have other things going on so I've been cutting back on my sugar intake I've been cutting back on ultra processed foods I am also in year four of the perimenopause so obviously hormones make things go up and down all over the place but my weight does tend to stay quite static and when it rises it tends to stay risen when it comes down it tends to come down and stay and that depends on what I'm doing if I've slacked off and I've started snacking too much my weight will climb very quickly and that's probably because I lead generally such a sedentary lifestyle because I work from home I don't have lots of reasons to go out and I don't like exercise <laughs> it's as simple as that so here are some numbers based on the normal exercise, my normal routine before I got the walking pad. So on average, I mean, some of these numbers are actually quite high, so I must have gone on a couple of walks that week. My step count was 24,633 steps. That equated to roughly 10.1 miles. So doing, I'm walking 10 miles a week, which is absolutely dreadful. And my calorie burn based on that, based on some not very scientific averages, was about 1,203.7 calories. Now, they reckon that you need to burn 
three and a half thousand calories to lose a pound of fat. That's what I read somewhere. But of course that depends on your food intake. If you keep eating the same or you start eating more because you think you can because you're exercising more, you're going to tip all those numbers all over the place. So here are my numbers based on my first full week of using the walking pad but also um, I do still go out on hikes when the weather and my routine allows and I have been sticking to cutting back on various things and as I said I've already noticed that because I have something else to do with my time when I'm not physically doing something instead of reaching for snacks in the kitchen I'm getting on the walking pad and I think that is helping so my step count for my first full week of my new routine was 88,875 which equates to roughly 36.47 miles per week actually I'm just going to change that it's not miles it's kilometers the original kilometer walk was 10.1 my new one is 36.47 and I, I will do some calculations there so you can see the actual differences my calorie burn for that first four week was 4,305 as an approximation. So that means theoretically if you burn three and a half, uh, three and a half thousand calories equals one pound of fat burnt, then over four weeks that does actually add up. If I'm doing burning roughly 4,305 extra calories per week and my calculations are for a month that works out roughly that equation so that might actually be roughly accurate now how your body reacts will depend on you a lot of the videos that I've watched of people trying out these walking pads are fitness people, they're fitness experts, they're fitness influencers, they teach um, lifestyle, that sort of thing. So a lot of them are really, really fit. So they're probably not going to see a difference with what, using one of these because they do all sorts of other exercise which would burn a lot more calories than me just walking. But for someone like me who's gone from doing 10 kilometers a week and suddenly I'm doing 36, that's a big shock to my system. That's basically me going from doing nothing to doing a lot and I think that's why I am going to keep monitoring this on a month by month basis and I know that as I lose weight my body will become adapted to the amount of exercise I'm doing so I will need to increase that now I've already mentioned that I've aggravated an old running injury so I need to be careful about that I can up the speed on my walking some of the time not always um, if I'm if I'm um, editing video or typing or something that involves me focusing I need to watch the speed just in case I fall off but there will be times when I can up the speed like if I'm just watching a YouTube video and provided I'm not aggravating that injury what I could also do is add the incline now I haven't added the incline yet I've worked out how I'm going to do it I've looked at some DIY ideas and you just need to elevate the front feet that's all I've got a piece of wood that's on blocks already um, which I can just slip under the front and I can already put an elevation in so I'm gonna see how I go for the next month and then I will probably start doing inclines and things next year as I um, as my body adapts to the mileage the extra mileage that I'm burning so yeah, I've lost five and a half pounds in actually 28 days. And I know that's a combination of things, but that is really good for your motivation. And based on those numbers, it must have had some effect. It must have had some addition um, to my calorie burn, to my, my weight. So that works for me. So that's my 30 day update. I think that's reasonably conclusive based on me. Now obviously when you're walking on these walking pads you can't just be ambling around 
at a, a supermarket shopping pace, you've got to put some effort in. Um, and I have seen people who've started using them who are much heavier than me. And I've seen them just like ambling and maybe using it three days a week. You've got to really use this. For me, this is a new lifestyle choice. This is a new routine to my day. But it's easy for me to do because I'm not rushing around dealing with other things. And if you're rushing around doing lots of other things and it involves walking, you're probably doing some of that mileage already. But I don't have kids to run around after. I don't have to commute to work. My routine, uh, apart from going out and doing the cleaning jobs I do, which also involves me doing some mileage, um, means that I have no excuse for not doing my 10,000 steps every day. Or 10,000 plus, depending on what I'm doing. So I think that's a pretty positive outcome after 30 days. I will keep... I will probably do a once a month update on this for a while and see how we get on. But I would say that if, like me, you are overweight, whether very or a bit, I mean I'm a bit overweight, I, um, and provided you are monitoring your diet properly and you are not just making up excuses for eating more, for eating the wrong things. Cut back on the sugar, cut back on the ultra processed food. You're going to have to learn to cook. And cook properly, not, I don't mean sticking a ready meal in the oven, I mean cooking from scratch the way I do. And if you're not sure how I cook, look at my cooking playlist and you'll see the sorts of things I do. It doesn't mean you can't eat anything fun, it doesn't mean you can't eat anything nice. You can home bake your desserts, you could stick less sugar in them, you can do all sorts of things. Anything that you're rationalising with yourself as an excuse is just going to make your job harder. You just have to be tough on yourself. So that's my update. Hope you've enjoyed that. Any questions or comments below, do add them. And um, I'll speak to you on this subject again in a month, but there will be lots of other videos coming, so enjoy. Speak to you soon. Bye-bye.